Thanks so much for coming. Uh, that's quite a lot of you. I was, I'm obviously now very intimidated and also delightfully surprised. Um, shall we? Shall I just get on with it? You think? Yes. Yeah. It's four o'clock. Get on with it. Um, <laughs> I I have a new book out, which is rather lovely. By and uh, it's the first time I've had a book out in Canada, which of course is you know the best country in the world, and also does does the best covers. And Gzine, I think, are just wonderful, and I'm just ever so proud that they've produced this book of mine called Remember Why You Fear Me sort of collection of quite odd sort of horror tales. Um, and I'm going to read you sort of half of one. I'm sort of picking my way through it. I'm going to sort of give you such highlights of a story called, uh, it's a nice, you know, you can tell that there was, there was good, good, really good editing on this, on this book because the story is called The Dark Space in the House, in the house, in the garden, at the center of the world. Because I couldn't work out what I was doing. And, um, and I thought that would be a good, pithy title. So, um, and it looks great actually on the page because it just takes up most of the page anyway. So after that writing it was easy. So I'm going to perform this, uh, as I say, and, and, I'll, and I'll explain what I'm going, how it fits together as I'm doing it hopefully. So I hope you enjoy it. <coughs> Thank you. I hope we do too. Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get something straight. <laughs> Right from the outset, okay? I'm not angry with you. <laughs> Mistakes were made on both sides. Mistakes, ha, arguably, I made just as many mistakes as you. Well, not quite as many, ha, but I accept I'm at least partly to blame. Okay? No, no, really, okay? Come on, take those looks off your faces. I'm never going to be angry with you. I promise. I have wasted so much of my life on anger. There are entire eons full of it. I'm not even kidding. And it does nothing. It achieves nothing. Anger? It's a crock of shit. Isn't it a beautiful day? One of my best. The sun's warm, but not too warm. You can feel it stroking at your skin. It's all over your bare bodies and so comforting, but without it causing any of that annoying sweaty stuff under the armpits. <laughs> Though I do maintain that sweat's a useful thing. <laughs> Look at the garden. Breathe it in. Tell me, be honest, how do you think it's coming on? You see what I've done? I've been pruning the roses, training the, uh, the, 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 the clematis, I've been cutting back the privet hedges. Not bad, and just you wait until spring. The daffodils will be out by then. Lovely. No. Seriously. Relax. Relax right now! I'm serious. The apples were a mistake. <laughs> Your mistake, my mistake, who's counting? My mistake was to set you a law without explaining why the law was being enforced. That's not a sound basis for any legal system. <laughs> and your mistake, that was eating a fruit in which I had chosen to house cancer. <laughs> well, I had to put it somewhere. You may have wondered about all those skin sores and why you've been coughing up blood and phlegm. Now you know. But don't worry, I'll fix it. See, you're cured. Papa looks after you. As for the apples, good source of vitamin A, low in calories, you just wait till you puree them up and top them with sugar. Oh God, do I love a good apple crumble? I'm not even kidding. Keep the apple with my blessing. As for the cancers, well, I'll just stick them in something else. Don't worry, you'll never find them. <laughs> Give me a smile. We're all friends. Smile for me. Wider than that. <laughs> and so, are we good, Cindy? And what is it, Steve? I think we're good. The fruit is all yours to eat. The air is all yours to breathe. The flowers all yours to smell. The beasts of the world, yours to name and pet and hunt and skin and fuck. I think we're good, but there is one last thing. Not a law. <laughs> I wouldn't call it a law. <laughs> no, okay, no, it's a law. <laughs> Don't go into the forest. The forest that's at the heart of the garden, the garden of the centre of the world. 
the forest where the trees are so tall that they scratch the heavens, so dense that they drown out the light, where even the birds that sit on the branches come out stained with black. What? Well, why? Because I said so. What? Oh, yeah, fair point. Because at the centre of the forest, there stands a house, and the house is old, and the house is haunted. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll be off then. Night, night, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. <laughs> and they went into the forest, and they found the house, and they went into the house. So, this is where you are. I couldn't find you. I didn't know where you could be. I thought maybe you were in the maze. You know that maze I made for you with all those tall hedges, cylindrical archways, and any number of delightful red herrings? The maze, yeah. I thought they're playing in the maze. It's easy to get lost in the maze. What a hoot. So I waited for you at the exit. I thought you'd come out eventually. I'd surprise you by saying boo. And I waited quite a long time. And one day, I thought to myself, you know what? I don't think they're in this maze at all. <laughs> the maze I made for them. So where could they be? I felt a bit of a prawn, I must say, when he had had a maze for six months, all primed to say boo, getting the exact facial expression right. I got a bit bored. I made a lot more cancers and viruses to keep my mind occupied. Oh, and I made the antelope extinct. Hope it wasn't a favourite. <laughs> but no, you found the house. And good for you. Oh, did I say you shouldn't come to the house? Did I? Doesn't sound like me. Hang on, trying to think. No, no, I can't imagine why I would have said that. You want a house with what? you know, rooms and floorboards and curtains and shit, then you go for it. Much better than a maze. Really, fuck the maze. <laughs> I want to hear you say it. Say it with me. Fuck the maze. Fuck the maze. You see, so that's it. I see I have no problem with the maze at all. I'm not even kidding. You have whatever you like. I never want to hold you guys back. I love you. I'm crazy about you. You have your house, a home, with a roof to keep the rain off. In fact, sorry about the rain, I'm not quite sure what that's about. <laughs> Very frustrating, must be leaking somewhere up there, the, the sky's cracked, got to be. And yeah, I can hold the rain back, but the thought of that crack, of that poor cowboy workmanship, it makes me a bit cross. Yeah. I'm quite angry, and when I get angry, it seems to rain all the more, and you know what? It's a vicious circle. And you found the wardrobes. Picking through the cupboards as if they're yours. And they are yours, of course they are. Look at you, Cindy. No, I mean, look at you. All those dresses, all those shoes, that skirt. Ha! That doesn't leave a lot to the imagination. Ha! That really emphasizes your um, ha! hips. Yeah. <laughs> and makeup, too. Though, if I can, Make a suggestion, the lipstick goes on the lips, hence the name, yeah. And you, um, Steve, you look nice too. <laughs> no, not all the house is haunted. Did I give you that impression? No, the kitchen's fine, the bedroom's fine, the sitting room, fine. <laughs> Bathroom, <laughs> there are no bogeymen looking behind the toilet system. No, it's the attic. It's the attic that has all the ghosts in. You haven't found the attic yet. You didn't know there even was an attic. Well, there it is. I wouldn't go looking for it, though. No good will come of it. Sometimes you stand underneath that attic at the right spot. You can feel the temperature drop. There'll be a cold chill pricking over your skin. There'll be a sickness in your throat. Your heart will start to beat uncomfortably fast. Listen hard enough. Press your ears to the ceiling you can hear whispers, the whispers of the dead. Nah, I wouldn't bother. You just stick with your mercifully spook-free lavatory, you'll be fine. <laughs> Is that the time? <laughs> I should go. It's a long way back to the garden and it's getting late. 
No, how kind. I shouldn't stay for dinner. Maybe next time, but how kind. What a kind thought. How lovely. I'll get back to my maze, my silly little maze. That'd be best. Better hurry, it's pissing down out there. Night, night then. You be happy. Be happy and stay happy. You both mean the world to me. <clears throat> night, night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. And they look for the attic, and they find the attic, and they go into the attic. You were thinking of a nursery, right? The attic for a nursery? That was the plan? Oh, sorry, didn't mean to make you jump. Coming round unannounced, very rude. But I tried the doorbell, and there was no answer. And I thought, shall I just pop in anyway? Why not? Good friends like us. Don't need to stand on ceremony. I can see why you didn't hear me. You're pretty busy. You're pretty entwined there. <laughs> Don't stop on my account. I, I can wait. You finish off. I don't mind. I'll watch. <laughs> Suit yourselves. Speaking of which, I can see you've discovered the joys of sex, which is nice. Um, I'm a little surprised ha, by your choice of partners. I mean, doesn't it strike you as a bit incestuous? <laughs> you crazy kids, what will you get up to next? I, I don't mind, I don't mind at all. I mean, it makes me wonder why you invented the zebu in the first place. I mean, you don't fancy the zebu? All those dewlaps? <laughs> it could have been a baby zebu that's growing inside your stomach this very moment. Imagine what that would have looked like. Oh, you didn't realise. Yeah, you're pregnant, congratulations. <laughs> Some men don't like women when they're pregnant, but Cindy, I must say, you look great. All shiny and hormonal like that. All your body parts swelling every which way. And yeah, well done too, Steve, yeah. <laughs> and you're going to need a nursery, which is why, I'm sure, you had only the best intentions when you ignored my advice and went up into the attic. And why not? Good choice. Babies are great, but take it from me, they're annoying. They cry a lot, there's a lot of noise and sick. Keeping the baby up in the attic out of earshot, it's a good plan. <laughs> Clear away the boxes, there'll be room up there for all those baby things babies seem to like. It's all just junk, there's nothing in there to worry about. Except, of course, for that one box. The one with the padlock on. Now, you two and I have had a bit of a laugh, haven't we? <laughs> it's all been fun, but this time, I'm really telling you, it's a padlock. That's a big fucking hint. <laughs> you are not to open the box. You are not to open the box. I forbid it. I absolutely forbid it. And yes, it's a law. It's an order. It's a commandment from up high. Leave the box alone. No matter what you hear inside. No matter what the ghosts inside the box say to you. Lightening the mood. Um, <laughs> any ideas for a name for the baby yet? No? Well, I'm just saying, you want to name, the, name it after me? You can. Call it God, or Lord, or Jehovah, or some such. I'd be honoured. Well, I can see you have things to do some of which will no doubt make you drowsy, you'll be wanting to sleep soon. So, you know, night, night, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. No, I really mean it, I'm not sure, I think I've got cancer in a few of the bed bugs. The bed bugs are riddled with cancer. You see a bed bug, you run. And they go up into the attic, and they break the padlock, and they open the box, and inside the box, there was a doll's house, a haunted doll's house, and they squeeze into the doll's house, and the doll's house is full of the dead, and the dead are us, and the dead don't realise. And they settle down, they, have a, they, they make a life for themselves. Steve gets a job in a bank, 
He has an affair, but it's a reasonably happy affair. His wife doesn't seem to mind much. Cindy has a baby. The baby is dead as it grows up, but that's okay. Everybody's dead there. It doesn't seem to matter. And they make the best of it. And once in a while, they go on holiday, and they try and look for a way back out of the doll's house, and they can't find one. And one day, God comes to dinner. Hello, hello, beaming smiles all around. Well, here we are, here we all are again. A clap on the host's back, hearty and masculine, a kiss on the hostess's cheek, just a little too close to the mouth. So good to see you both, I'm not even kidding. I brought some wine. Where would you like it? They showed him the house. He made appreciative noises at the sitting room, the kitchen, the bedroom. He admired the toilet. Steve pointed out to him how the flush worked. They settled down at the kitchen table and ate Cindy's casserole, and they all agreed it was really good. Well, well, here we all are again. <laughs> God was wearing a sports jacket that was meant to look jaunty, but it was two sizes too big for him. God looked old and too thin. The jacket was depressing. It made him look diminished somehow. The wine he'd brought was cheap but potent. The conversation was awkward at first, a series of polite remarks, desperate pauses, two big smiles and eyes looking downward. The wine helped. They began to relax. Cindy asked if they could ever go back to the garden. Go backwards, said God. I don't know if you can go backwards. You crazy kids. What will you think of next? They laughed and shared anecdotes of mazes and apples, of fairy tales told long ago. God mused, I think that the idea is, if I think about it, I think the older you get and the more experienced you get and the more you realise how big the world is and how many opportunities are in front of you, then the smaller the world becomes, yeah? It gets smaller and smaller, narrowing in on you until all that's left is the confines of a wooden box. He coughed. You could say that it's a consequence of maturity, of finding your place in the world and accepting it, of discovering humility, and in that humility, discovering yourself. Or maybe, ha, it's just a fucking bad design flaw. <laughs> Sorry. He drank more wine, he farted, they all laughed. Oh, the simple comedy of it all. But, God said, the world isn't all there is. It can't be. There must be a way out. At the very centre of the world, there's a dark space. Don't go to it. Don't go. It isn't a law. I'm not ha, forbidding you. But I think, God said, and his voice dropped to a whisper, and he looked so scared. I think there are ghosts there. I think the dark space is haunted. Well, said Steve eventually, it's getting late. It is getting late, said Cindy. No doubt you wanted to get back home, said Steve, back to your garden and whatnot. Back, said Cindy, to your maze. Shook away God's wine glass, put it into the sink with a clatter. God looked sad. I'm dying, he said. Oh dear, said Steve. That's a shame, said Sudi. <laughs> I've been mucking about with too many cancers. I've got nobbled by the Ebola virus. I've come down with a spot of mad cow disease. It's all the same to me. I've been careless, too careless, and about things that were too important. He coughed again, gently wiped at his mouth with a handkerchief, looked at the contents of the handkerchief with frank curiosity. He blinked. Shame, said Cindy again. I, I wanted to see you. I wanted to be with you because we're family, aren't we? You're always my favourites, weren't you? You're my favourites. Did you know that? I'm crazy about you, crazy kids. I miss you. I miss you like crazy. We never had a cross word. Others before you, others after. Well, I admit, I got angry. Plagues, locusts, 
fat, greasy scorch marks burnt into the lawns, the lawns of the Garden of Eden. But I love you guys. I love you, Cindy, with your big smile and your deep eyes and your fine hair and your huge norks and your sweet, sweet smelling. And you, what was it, Steve, with your um, winning personality? <laughs> if I have to die, I want to die with you. His eyes were wet, and they couldn't tell if he were crying or roomy. This world can't be all there is, he breathed. It can't be. I have faith. There must be a way out. He opened his spindly arms wide. Give me a hug. So they did. Because, said God, you loved me once. You loved me once, didn't you? You loved me once. You loved me. Tell me you loved me. Tell me you loved me once. You loved me. You loved me. You loved me. They buried their father in the back garden that night. It wasn't a grand garden, but it was loved. And Cindy and Steve had planted flowers there, and it was good enough. Then they went indoors, and they began looking for the dark space at the centre of the world. They'd been to Tenerife and to Venice. They'd seen no dark spaces there. So they looked in the kitchen. They cleaned out the pots and the pans from the cupboard. They looked in the bathroom behind the cistern. They looked in the attic. They thought they'd go to bed. It had been a long day, and Steve offered Cindy his hand, and she took it, a little surprised he hadn't offered her a hand in years. They both liked the feel of that, of that hand-holding thing. It made them seem warm and loved. They climbed the stairs together. They looked for the dark space in the bedroom, too, but it was nowhere to be found. They got undressed. They kicked off their clothes, left them where they fell upon the floor, stood amidst them. They came together, naked as the day they were born. They explored each other's bodies, and it was like the first time. Now there were no expectations, nothing defensive, nothing to prove. He licked at her body, she nuzzled into his. Like the first time, in innocence. She found his dark space first. It was like a mole, it was on his thigh. He found her dark space in the shadow of her overhanging left breast. She put her ear to his thigh, then he pressed his ear against her tit. Yes, there were such whispers to be heard, and they marvelled that they'd never heard them before. She slid her fingertips into his dark space, and they numbed not unpleasantly. He kissed at hers, and he felt his tongue thicken. His tongue grew. All his mouth was a tongue. They both poked a bit further inside. They wondered if they could squeeze themselves into something that was so small. They looked at each other for encouragement, but their faces were too hard to read. They wondered if they could dare. And then she smiled, and at that he smiled. And they knew they could be brave again, just one last time. They pushed onwards and inwards, and they went to some place new. Thank you very much. You know, annoying plugging thing. So that's in a book. Actually, it's in, it's, actually, it's in also a book, uh, House of Fear, which came out. Uh, Jonathan Oliver there was the man who commissioned this story about two years ago now. Yeah. Which and that you know, uh, and this is now uh, has been reprinted, and it's it's now one of the books, the stories in this book. So you know, Jonathan has to buy it again in order to read it, which is <laughs> a sort of bizarre situation for him. So uh, this is on sale at the Cheesing Table, um, and I'd be very flattered, actually, which of course means a lot you know, because I'm British and I flatter very easily, <laughs> if, you were put, if you wanted to buy it, and I'll happily sign it and do whatever you want inside it, actually. Thank you so much for listening. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, guys.